All right, good Wednesday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Kramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Jim, let's begin with your reaction to advanced micro devices earning. Look, uh, she did a fantastic job, and it was one of those quarters where you just say, wow, firing on all cylinders. Uh, Eric Johnson has the best piece by far, J-H-O-N-S-A. If you don't read him in the street, you're nut nuts not to. <laughs> because what he's really saying and what, what I heard last night is they've got the best graph graphical user interface chip chips other than NVIDIA. Their chips are being used for crypto mining, which I know a lot of people want to play it for Bitcoin. They do have the best gaming chips uh, for Microsoft. Microsoft selected them. And I think that kind of the world is their oyster right now. Then there were some people who were saying way out, but they're still not making money. Well, say so promise the free cash flow will be positive this year. They will be making money. Uh, and AMD can go higher. Um, it, is it expensive? I know that BMO downgraded it today, but my take is this is a momentum play and it's got the momentum. All right, moving on, let's talk about Boeing. Boeing's quarter was a uh, tour de force, and the reason why it was tour de force is a lot of things that people were worried about didn't pan out. Uh, dream, the the uh, 787 turns out to be now a huge cash generator, not a huge cash drain. Uh, Boeing's got an order book uh, that is as long as, uh, as far as the eye can see. It's interesting because McDermott predicted that. He's a free, previous CEO to Muhlenberg. A lot of what Muhlenberg is doing is playing the hand that McNerney gave him. Uh, aircraft are, are, problem of, are a middle classification of uh, China and much of the world. And of course, strong demand from the United States. And a lot of people didn't think the numbers were going to come through because a lot of the aircraft companies, uh, a lot of the, the aerospace companies, uh, ha have not seen great numbers. General Dynamics, people were a little depressed by that number, uh, Northrop Grumman. But remember, Boeing is uniquely passenger uh, with some defense, and the passenger companies, me meaning the airlines, can't get enough planes. It's very hard to get a plane from Boeing right now. The queue is long, and you got to wait. All right, how about Coca-Cola? You know, I spoke to Quincy, the new CEO, and he's obviously very optimistic, but he says he's going to do some acquisitions, but it's just going to be to bolster beverage. They do have Coke Black Zero, uh, the, the, which is moving the needle. Uh, a lot of people have been saying, you know what, diet drinks are just going to continue to go down. Their numbers are going up for that. That is stabilizing things. Remember, they're doing a refranchising. It's really going to be Coca-Cola light. They're going to generate a lot of cash. Uh, do I like Coca-Cola? No. A Chapel Trust owns PepsiCo. PepsiCo's model is better. Why? Because the snack business is better than the, than the uh, carbonated business and certainly better than any of the other beverage businesses. And Chipotle had a nice quarter. Yeah, look, Chipotle... Yeah, it's a shame that there was, obviously, my thesis was it takes 18 months and the people forget. And the thesis was exactly right. On the 18th month, they really came through. But here we are with, with the norovirus and with the rat pictures, and they're monitoring day by day. They just had a minus 5% comp since this, this news just came out. Uh, so uh, the tolling, we don't know. I've, I've been saying that now maybe they have to start the clock back, given the fact that there were these incidents. But I think it's really important to recognize that Chipotle's back making a lot of money. Uh, the average unit's really good again. The labor costs are really good again. And they've gotten, the, they've gotten a lot of things right. And if it hadn't been for these incidents, I think the stock would be in the high 400s. And Jim, you also just spoke to McDonald's CEO Steve Easterbrook. Yeah, I talked to Steve, and Steve, I have a good relationship. Uh, and he, I asked him to define the mojo, why the franchisees have bought in, and it's because he's a strong leader. Remember, the franchisees are like a Congress. He's like the president. He has really inspired a lot of people, and he's made it so that with a simple menu, uh, it's a little bit easier, less errors. The, these franchisees like that. Uh, he's doing a lot of uh, going to be mobile. Uh, it's going to be Uber Eats. Uh, he's going to be doing a lot more technology. He's got an innovation factory. What he did, he's innovated in Poland and see what works and spreads around. 6.6% comp sales from international means they're taking a lot of share. Uh, Steve is doing everything right. And Steve was very confident that things aren't done yet. I'm with Steve. I think that they are going to do a lot more stuff. It's not done. What a big day for you, Jim. You also have Michael Corbett of City on tonight. You know, Corbett is trying to justify uh, the, the why the stock should trade much higher. A lot of people feel like ultimately it's going to go to 100. Let me just give you the math of, of that. The tangible book here is around $67 and say 50 cents. Stocks at 68. Most of the big uh, cap stocks tell it, sell at about 1.8 times book. Even if you sell at 1.5 times book, you would see that this stock should be in the 90s. Well, isn't that interesting? He's uh, using a $9 earnings power number for 2020. 
He gets that by doing buying back a lot of stock, and they're going to be buying back a ton of stock, all laid out in this investor day, uh, by having a little bit higher earnings. Uh, obviously, he's not building in a huge number of Fed rate hikes, because if he did, the number $9 would be in probably 2019. I'm a believer. I think the fintech business is very good. 50% of the business is an annuity stream, it, uh, because that's to do with their transaction services. It's very, very good. This was Corbett's first interview. It was the first uh, uh, analyst meeting in nine years. He's very confident that they've reached an inflection point. Remember, they got blessed by the regulators for the living well better than everybody else. They flunked twice. They uh, did a huge amount of recapitalizations. They had a gigantic fraud experience in Mexico. They had a $7 billion Justice Department to fine against them. And they came out on the other side because of the strength of their franchise. And it's a holding of Action Alerts Plus. Uh, City has been one of our best. And that interview tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on Mad Money. We look forward to yeah, that. Yeah, it's good. It's two parts. The longest I've ever done. Oh, we're excited. And then on your Mad Dash segment, you talked about NXP Semiconductors, another AAP. Yeah, this is important. NXP, let's just give you the math of this. Um, NXP is being taken over by Qualcomm for 110. That deal is nowhere near being completed. It still needs EU regulation. Uh, NXP, I buy a Dutch company. Uh, NXP makes uh, near field communications, but they really have a specialty since they bought Freescale in auto. So if you take a look at Texas Instruments, which has a lot of auto, it's very, very strong. The read through there is NXP may be doing better. When there's stuff that's involving cell phone, where you see how Skyworks is doing, read through it's better. Put it all together, the stock's trading 15 cents from the 110 bid. What that's saying is people aren't going to tender to Qualcomm bid. They need about 80%. Some people say they only need 70. But I would tell you this, we're not tendering, and we're telling Action Alerts people, the club members, do not tender. We think we can get a higher price. All right, Jim, let's end with earnings previews. We have quite a few on Thursday. Amazon. Look, Amazon is not really an earnings story. Amazon is a world domination story. You've got to be hearing, uh, people are saying Amazon Web Services, one here that they got a lot more clients, they don't break it out like that. Uh, we obviously have Amazon Prime. It's interesting, there's a stock iRobot that talked about how just in Amazon Prime, they sold enough Rumba vacuum cleaners that they blew away the quarter. Uh, I think that Amazon has a very good story to tell, but they may not tell it. They may not want to tell it, but I think that the stock is still a buy. I have not changed my view. We also have a few action alerts named first up Southwest Air. Southwest Air, the airlines are in uh, free fall mode. Uh, I don't mean to use that metaphor. Maybe it's better to say that they're getting hit. Uh, the airlines and the transports in Norfolk Southern getting hit. Uh, on a quarter that looked pretty darn good to me, but people on Union Pacific went down, Norfolk Southern went down, CSX went down, American went down, Continental. Southwest is going to be the best of the lot, but it, the, the uh, gravitational pull uh, against the airlines may bring that down to a level where you can do some buying. I will tell club members that I think at 58 you pull the trigger. Hmm. All right, and then what are you expecting from Dow Chemical? Dow Chemical, I mean, I'll speak to Andrew Liveris. I, I think Andrew, uh, this is his swan, so this is the last quarter for Dow. Uh, and I think that Andrew's going to go out on a high. Uh, they do have a lot of different, um, uh, uh, they have a great feed stock base and a very higher and much higher prices on commodities that they're selling. That's very good. Uh, their non-commodity, their seed business, their ag business should be very, very strong. The combination with DuPont is going to yield a much larger price, which is why we continue to hold it. And if you don't earn any Dow, I think you can still buy it. All right, and then finally, Starbucks. Starbucks, I don't think it's going to be good. Uh, we sold some stock at 63, 64. Uh, I think they say that they've conquered the mobile issue. So, by the way, to Steve Easterbrook saying, don't worry about it. But the mobile issue has led to a slowdown. Uh, in the stores that have mobile and they're rolling out mobile because they've not been able to figure out the mosh pit. That is the people who are trying to cut the head. You don't know who, why that person's ahead of you. You don't understand why the line is forming where it is. Uh, Panera had to deal with this. It took two years to fix. Uh, they have to fix it. They have to fix it for the stock to go higher. If they fix it, and Kevin Johnson, who's a technologist, came from Juniper, if they fix it, the stock goes to 65. If they don't, it goes to 55. All right, Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Thank you so Thank much you. as always. And for more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio, head to actionalertsplus.com.